sababu ya kukusifu
You look amazing. You look amazing. Najua wanaume ni hard kuambia chali, lakini mwambia unakafiti. Now I want you, I see there's a clear divide, ladies and gentlemen, yeah? So ladies, hallelujah! Gentlemen, praise the Lord! Are you ready to give God a praise? Tell your neighbor ni patie na fasi tafadhani. Aa, mwambia please ni patie na fasi. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I beg. Uh, can you hear me, neighbor? I beg. Me, I'm here to praise Jehovah. I know what he has done for me. I know what he will do for me. And I know who I am in him. If you believe that, can you give God a shout? Are you a chosen generation? Tell your neighbor, I am a chosen generation. Call for to show. Wanaume, come on. All I require. And I know. 
I know who God says I You sound amazing. Where are the men come? I know who God says I Ladies, can we hear the men? No? No? Oh, I'm walking in power. Walking in power. Now give God a shout if you believe that. Band, are we ready? All right. Come on, band, let's go. Everybody, come on. If you know who you are, give Jesus a shout. Come on. Yeah. We are a chosen. We are a chosen generation. Come on. Come on to show is all I require. Chosen generation, we are a chosen generation. Come for to show is that all I require. Hey, and I know, I know who I know who God says I am. Hey, come on, somebody, let's move to it.
simple we say Wahamanati oh my god you sound amazing men we say Wahamanati I boss Hi bo See ya bonga You do it with a salute Wahamanati Umetembea nami Wahamanati Sisi hey One, two, three, let's go You sound amazing Wahamanati 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 Siaponga Wahamanati 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 Haimo Wahamanati Siaponga This is what we mean Umetemena si Umetemena si Shukuru. Is it true? To be an assi. Oh, met a man assi. Oh, met a man assi. To a shukuru. Can you testify and say, Oh, met a man? Hi, Bo. Testify to your neighbor. Sema, I met a man on me. Tell your neighbor. I met a man on me. Nashukuru. Tell another neighbor. I met a man on me. Testify. Hi, Bo. Hey. I love what the girls are doing. They're holding hands and they're singing. I met a man on me. Hi, Bo. Get your South African out. Oh. One, two, three, let's go. Hey, Titi, hey, 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 Bo. Hey, Titi, hey, hey, hey.
Can I teach you? So we start slow. We say, Jesus Christ is, hey, Redeemer. Hey, hey, Jesus Christ is my Savior. Jesus Christ is my healer. Jesus Christ is my Savior. Jesus Christ is Redeemer. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Jesus Christ is Redeemer. My Savior. My healer. Let me say, hey, ta, ta. So this is where now you raise your voice. You go crazy. And then tell your neighbor, ni, ni, ni war. And we have the victory. So when you say, when I say, hey, ta. Are you ready? That is the enemy we are chasing away. So when we start slow, we just say, hey. Hey, hey, Jesus Christ is a hey, redeemer. Jesus Christ is my savior. Jesus Christ is redeemer. Hey, da, da, da. Hey, da, 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 da. Hey, da, da. Hey, da, da. Jesus Christ is redeemer. Jesus Christ is my savior. Jesus Christ is the winner. Jesus Christ is Redeemer. Hey, da, da, hey, da, da, hey, da, da, hey, da, da, one, two, three, let's go. I cannot hear you, hey. One more time, lift up your voice. Takayo, my goodness, Hakuna Sila. Hey, Yeote, Ilio, can you make Chaco, Nachaco, Nachaco, Hakita? One more time, Hakuna. Hey, Sila, Yeote, Ilia, tomorrow, this is what we do. One, two, three, let's. One more time. Hey. To testify to your neighbor, can you get a neighbor? Turn to your neighbor. Did you get a neighbor? Kama uko mwisho wa laini uko peke yako dandia neighbor wa mingine mkwe wa tatu waina shida. It's fine. We're in the house of the Lord. Umuambie, hakuna silaha yeyote ilio tumwa kinyume chako itakayo can you preach to your neighbor? Hakuna silaha yeyot iliotumwa. Kinyume chako. Itakayo. All right, now walk to another neighbor. Walk to another neighbor. I beg. Pasta, pasta nani. Walk to another neighbor. Are you ready? Can you tell them, I beg. I am here to tell you something. 
Mommy, Hakuna, Hakuna, Silla, hey. Choco, Itakayo, Mommy, Hakuna, Silla, Ikuani, Makonchua, Kukosa, Haita, Paulo. Can you make Hakuna mungu kama wewe baba Hakuna mungu kama wewe yawe Uwanilele, uwanilele So this is what we do. We do one, two, three, we go.
Yeshua. Umesonga ile kiti ambacho kiko mbele zako hapo ama ile iko nyuma yako hakikisha kiko na mtu so that we maximize the space that we have. Praise the Lord. Yes, let us be quiet so that we can continue. This is not just like any other meeting. It is more than a rally. Praise the name of Jesus. And without wasting a lot of time, uh, we want to get to another session. So if your neighbor is, uh, is talking, just look at her or him with the serious eyes and don't say anything to him or her. Hallelujah. So, ningependa tuweze uh, kuenda katika kipindi kingine because uh, we have two sessions uh, for this day and already we have started the first session. And later in the day, we are going to have the, uh, that is the rally. And before that, I uh, would like to, to appreciate all of you for coming and answering to the call to attend this great event. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want to tell somebody by your coming, you shall go home with something for yourself, for your school, and for your parents. Praise the Lord. And I want to say that this day, to some people, it shall remain an history. So today, destinies I will be changed. A lot of things are going to happen here. Praise the name of the Lord. So, I want to, uh, to invite our regional, that is uh, our Matibu Kibwezi chairperson of the DSEF so that she can uh, invite the, the, the patron and also the deputy principal of this school. Then later, the deputy will invite uh, Madam principal so that you can be officially welcomed in this, uh, in this meeting. Hallelujah. Vanessa Sifiwe. So, my name is Paul, the organizing secretary of the whole event, and I thank God because of the grace. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, and uh, I want us to, uh, to put our hands together as I will come, Madam Francisca, the CEO Petron, Matron, uh, Matilu Boys, to pick up a coffee, and up a puja, yes, Amen. And let's appreciate a Paul, our secretary for this region. A Paul has done a good job. Uh, we also have a uh, Madam Charles, uh, who is at the desk there doing registration. Let's appreciate her in absentia. Uh, she, is, uh, she is our vice chairman of Makindu Akibwezi Subfound. And then we also have Grace Mwendo, I believe she's in the house. Uh, so we are happy uh, to be here again. Uh, last time we were supposed to be here, it was on a 15th March 2020, and uh, we urged to cancel that rally. And uh, we thank God uh, because uh, we are here again uh, to preach the good news. The Lord is in this place. There is a power in this place to change us, to transform us. It does not matter the agenda that has brought you here. Uh, maybe you are going for an outing and you wanted to be out of school but the power of God is going to change you. We are going to leave this place uh, for the better. Amen. Uh, so God bless you so much. I believe we have got around uh, 40 and uh, three schools in attendance. Let's put the, uh, what, uh, the Lord for that. Let's put the Lord for that. Yes, we have schools uh, 43. And uh, this is telling me that now 
I've seen our host for the national convention. I'm sure uh, we are going to have something good, but he's going maybe to speak to us later. Uh, so at this moment, I want to welcome all of us to Ma Kindu Kibwezi region, uh, where we are doing our first Mammoth Rally this year. Uh, so feel welcomed. And then I want to invite uh, the Sioux Patron and Gumo girls uh, to come and uh, invite us officially and also invite the, the, uh, the principal to invite. So let's put our hands together for Madam Angumi. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to the most high God. Amen. I thank God this morning. My name is Veronica Nduli. I am saved. I'm a child of God. And uh, we are humbled as Gumo family for the great favor the Lord has shown upon us as uh, the chair for Makindu Kibwesi KSCF team has said on that day we were alone. We began on Friday, Saturday and on that fateful Sunday because of Corona you could not come but the Lord has done it again. Praise the Lord. So we worship the Lord because it's a great assembly that has been mandated by our living God. And I know it's not just a rally like any other, but this is a great day, a great day indeed, and many histories shall be written out of this day. And because we are so much blessed to have our principal in our windiest, a rare occasion, praise the name of the living God. Uh, we thank God that we have a principal who is saved, who attends rallies, who attends Sunday services, and therefore we don't take it for granted. And uh, I'll take this opportunity to welcome her so that she can now welcome you officially into this school and none other but our senior principal, <laughs> Madam Catherine, and we glad that she comes from. Thank you. Let's 
officiate our principal, chief principal, and our host. Amen. Uh, let's be upstanding as we welcome the preacher. standing. We want to thank everyone that is here. Thank you for the opportunity that we can come and minister. Uh, we don't take this for granted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, what you're about to receive this morning, I promise you, it will change your life. I just want you to raise your hands before even we... I, I share who is preaching. Just lift your hands to the heavens. Tell the Lord something about your heart. A heart is a ground. It's a state. It has a condition. I don't know what is the condition of your heart. I don't know what it's, it's the condition of your heart right now. But I just want you to raise your hands. Tell the Lord I am here. As a young person, even the people that are here that are old, just raise your hand. Open your, open your mouth. You don't need a song. You don't need a song. You don't, you don't need a song. You just need to open your heart and tell the Lord, I am here. If you can speak in tongues, those that are here with me, just open your mouth, speak in tongues. Yes, Lord, we are here. We are here and we know your power is here. Father, we release ourselves to you. Our hearts is a ground that needs to receive a seed. Father, I pray for every young person here that their heart is a ground that will receive a seed, a seed that will grow, a seed that will mature and bear fruit in the coming days. Lord, we are here such as this afternoon, such as this morning. Lord, as we receive your word, we come to you just the way we are. You know us by our names. You know us, Lord. Open your heart and tell the Lord, I am here. Do not pass me by. Holy Spirit, this is your meeting. Our Father in heaven, this is your meeting. Jesus Christ, this is your meeting. You are the center of this place. We silence every demonic activity. This is Jesus Christ, uh, meeting in the name of Jesus. Oh, shekela mahande, lika yanda yaba, reshe keteleya, riyanda yabo. Yes, Lord, we lift you above everything. We lift you above everything. We lift you above everything. This is your meeting. This is your meeting. Our hearts are ground. We are going to receive from you. We are going to receive from you, oh God. No, we are receiving from you. Oh, Shalahandeleba. Reketele la Maya. Rianda Yabo. Yes, Lord. We are thankful that you are here with us. You are with us here. You are here with us, Father. You are here with us, Father. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, O God. Oh, Sheila Handebaya. Reketa Yamaya. Yes. Mahali Hapa.
Yes, the Lord is already here. Just open your heart and you can have your seats. Yes, 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 yes. You know, sometimes you don't know how to uh, <laughs> uh, do the introduction, but as we stand here, I think uh, I should give my husband to introduce me. He's the head of our house and our home. So uh, we can give a clap to the Lord even as he continues. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Amen. Just before she leaves, uh, just introductions my names. Um, my name is Paul Mushiri Bolandi. I'm a pastor at Christian Church. And this is my wife. She's called Irene Mushiri. Yes. Yes. We, we've been married for 14 years, going 15 years. And we praise the Lord because the Lord has been good. And we have been blessed with three young, 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 young people there. Young people, two boys and a lady, 12, 9, and 5. Yes, two boys and a girl. Buona sifiwe. McHenry, Ashwin, and Emma. And the Lord has blessed us. Buona sifiwe. So can we give a clap, a round of applause as a sheet? Yes, one as if you were. Amen. As you've heard, my names are Paul, and I'm privileged and I'm honored to be here. Uh, just to start with some, um, just to appreciate the men of God and people who have fathered us and allowed us to be here. Um, I will start first, obviously, with saying thank you to KSEF. Can you clap to KSEF? <laughs> they are uh, being led, being led, Kibwezi uh, Makindu. Thank you for organizing and bringing so many souls here for this uh for this for this rally one as if you were sana yes have you give, given them a clap let's give them a clap let's give them a good clap a round of applause yes and also thank you for ngumo ngumo the chat the place that we are at the moment that they have allowed us to be here to interrupt and use their toilets use the atmosphere Sindio, can we give them a clap can we give them a clap Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, some others who have even um, helped us to be here, just some accolades. Um, I'm here on behalf of Archbishop Henry Molandi uh, from Christian Church International. He was the one who was supposed to be here uh, because of, but his schedule did not allow him. So he sent me, so uh, I'm here on his behalf. And he sent me to bring him uh, the word and also to give you his greetings. Can you also receive his greetings? Receive his greetings. And we also say thank you. Also, uh, Bishop Masika uh, sponsored. These are some of the people who have sponsored this for us to be here. Can we also give him a clap, Bishop Masika? Yes, going on to Apostle Juma of Life. Uh, Life Church and also Apostle T for doing all of this and he's coming in the afternoon. Can you give him also a clap? <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. Uh, some other sponsors. We have Cooperative Bank who also uh, allow us and sponsor us uh, so that we can put this thing. This It costs a good amount of money to do all of this. Can we give a clap to that bank and the leadership of that bank, uh, Gideon Miroki. Thank you each and every one of you uh, who have blessed us with resources that we can be here. Now, are you ready for the word? Are you ready for the word? We have danced, we have shouted, and we have called the Lord. Now we can hear uh, some few minutes the word of God. And I wanted to start with this. I wanted to start with this. Um, can you say, I am a Joseph generation? I'm hearing the ladies, but I can't hear the gents. I can't hear the gents. I'm a Yenuni base. Yenuni base. Okay, can I hear the gents? I'm a Joseph generation. Mumeskia, my ladies. Mumuaskia. Mumuaskia. Can they do better than that? Ata kama wanaguruma. Kama ile matatu ya Nairobi. Hi, hi, hi. Can we hear my Joseph generation? I, out of 10, to our pay and 
to Ay 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 wanaume we cannot be the Joseph generation na tunapewa tu Eh Joseph was excellent and we'll see that in a little bit Eh can can we get to at least a 7 Can we get to at least a 7 Okay can I hear I am a Joseph generation Munawapea ngapi? Munawapea ngapi? Five. Kwa hivyo tuongeze? Aye, let's do it again. I am a Joseph generation. I am a Joseph generation. Eh! Hey! My ladies mumesikia? Wako juu? Aya tuoneshe yetu inagonganga rekta scale na inapita. Tuwaonyeshe. Ah, can you say I'm a Joseph generation? I am a Joseph generation. Woo! Can we give them a clap, young man? Oh. Buana sifiwe sana. Amen and amen. Buana sifiwe. I just wanted to ask to start from... Um, the book of G Genesis, Genesis chapter 37. This is Genesis chapter 37. And I want us just to look at it uh, from different angles. Different angles. Look at it from who this young man was. An example of who he was. And, and then we'll conclude at the end. We want to do some chants. And I know our pastor here was leading us in chants, but we'll do some chants. Because I know, and we have been told by our deputy principal, that there are things that happened two years ago in the month of March here, eh, 15th of March. There are things that happened here that we need, we, we need to take control and say that these things will not happen again. Uh, when we are here, these things cannot happen. Yes, and what happened, I can remember. We, did, we were coming for this mammoth rally. Same about, you know, that month of March. And one thing after another, we put up a tent. And what happened with the tent? I remember the people called us and told us the tent imeanguka. That is what started. Sindio? Simuna kumbuka? Tulisimamisha hema ikafanya nini? Ikaanguka. That is what happened. Ikaanguka. And then after that, we insisted we still wanted to do. Tukaleta chuma zingine and we put up another tent. Sindio? And then after we put it up, what happened? Corona hit. And things stopped. But let me tell you, there is a sound that comes from heaven. Even when the devil wants to put his tentacles. Eh? There is a sound that comes from heaven. And I know Apostle T will come and tell you, what you see here was not there in 2020. Sindio? But because of COVID, now what can we see? Eh, what can you see? The glory of God. That we will preach louder. We will sing louder. We will declare the goodness of the Lord. Even much more. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Genesis 37. Verse 1. It starts with verse 1. And um, I know we can read that. We'll read that. Genesis chapter 37. Chapter 37, verse 1. It's a story, and, and I love this story. I love this story. It's a, and I'm reading from NLT. And it's a story of, of Jacob. It starts with Jacob. It talks about that as Jacob settled in the land of Canaan, uh, where his father had lived as a foreigner. This is his account. And Jacob and his family, when Joseph, it starts there, that this is the account of, Joseph, of Jacob and his family. It starts by saying that when Joseph was 17 years, so he jumps. And I want us just to see here. This, he was 17 years old and he often tended his father's flock. He worked for his half-brothers, the sons of his father's wives, Bilhah and Zilpah. But, go, but Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things that his brothers were doing. And Jacob loved 
Joseph more than, more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day, Jacob had a special gift uh, made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. Verse 4. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They could say a kind word to him. One night, Joseph had a dream. And when he had told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field trying, uh, tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundle stood up. And your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. Verse 8. His brothers responded, So you think that you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think that you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about them. Verse 9. Soon, Joseph had another dream. And again, he told his brothers about, the, about it. Listen, I have another dream, he said. The sun, moon, and the 11 stars bowed low before me. This time, he told the dream to his father, as well as his brothers. But the fathers called him. What kind of dream is that? He said, will you, will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? But while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant. That's just the, 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 the starting of the text. And I want us just to think about what we have read about this. And we start about understanding really who was this Joseph. Who was this young man who they say was a man born to Jacob at his old age. What really does that mean? And one of the things that I can tell you when you read the word of God is you should start searching really the meaning of each of these words. One of the things that you will notice about this is when he says that truly that this was the son of his old age, let us go back and ask ourselves, really, is, was he really born out of his old age? Of what does this mean? So that we can understand why Joseph was the way he was. Because this issue of being hated, this issue of his brothers being jealous, Eh? can make us wonder and not think, ama ni kwa sababu walikuwa na jipiga kifua, ama ni kwa sababu walikuwa na hizi noto. But if we understand it from a godly perspective, then we can understand why we are saying we need to be a Joseph generation. Buwana asifiwe sana. Amen. The story goes back and it talks about how did Joseph, how was Joseph born? Or even let's go back, how did Jacob get married? And we all remember that because of his brother being jealous of him after he had received the birthright, eh, he had supplanted his brother and got the birthright plus the blessing. Then his brother intended to kill him. And so the mother and the father decided to send him away to, their to the wife's brother who was Laban, who was in Haran, for him to stay there until the hatred and the anger of Esau cooled down. But when he got there, thinking he would stay a short time, then his uncle said, because you're not going quickly, what can you do? You can't just stay like this. And by that time, he had seen the daughter of Laban who was rich and said, I like this one. I would like to marry her. So Joseph inquired from Laban, and said, uh, not Joseph, Jacob, and said, how can I marry her? Because I love her. He said, work for me for how long? How long? Seven years. And indeed, seven years, the Bible says, were well, just like a what? Like a day or two. It passed so quickly because of the love that Joseph had for who? For Rachel. But when it came to the day of the wedding, and the arrangements was done. 
Eh? What happened? Eh? When he was waiting, they gave him enough drink so that he couldn't know who he was getting married. Sindio? Yes. That's why we advise you alcohol is not good for your, for your system. Because if you engage in alcohol, you may marry somebody's sister. When you wake up in the morning, unafikiria ukona nani? Na rechu. Unajikuta ukona nani? Unajikuta ukona lea. Even for the ladies, unaeza dhani, unaoa nani? Mr. That. Unapata ni the? Yes, he's the brother. And that's what happened. He got married to one and then he was so angry with the uncle. He said, what have you done to me? Why did you do this? He says, cool down, brother. Ali muambia, relax. In our customs, eh? kwa customs Zet, we always start with the older. Yes. And that's a very good teaching of knowing that you need fathers in the house. Because if the father was there, Think about that. If Isaac was there, Laban would not have played tricks. See the queen? So we need fathers in the house. Can we give a clap to all the fathers that we have? Our pastors, our mentors. Oh yes, let's give them a clap. With them, you will marry the right person. Without them, you may get two. And I can tell you one is enough. When you get two, ask the ones who have two. There is a lot of trouble. Yes. Because Eve was only one. They were not Eve and Shniv. It was only Eve. Amen. The story continues and says that after this happened, the uncle said to Lisa, if you want the other one, the seven days of celebration, finish the celeb seven days, and then you work for me for another seven years, and then I'll give you who? Then I'll give you Rachel. When he arrived there, he was about 40 years. So if he stayed there for another 14 years, how old is he? How old is he? About 54, yes? So by the time he was 54, is no, not 54, is when he wanted to go back. But after seven years, which I believe was about 47, then what happened? Then after he got the two wives, the children started coming. Children started coming. And in seven years, Jacob had 11 kids. Oh, yes. Read your Bible. Eh? Unaona wa ukosawa? Jacob was, was very okay. Alikuwa sawa. Sindio? Ama na mnagani? Yes. In seven years, he had how many kids? Eleven. Four from the concubines. And how many? And seven from his wives. Eh? Six from Leah and one from? Because the Bible says immediately he got Joseph. Then he wanted to go back because the seven years were over. That's what the Bible says. So immediately he wanted to go back. That was the 14th year. And then his uncle felt, Abana, how is it talk a vile vile? So that is where I wanted to ask you a question. Really, when you read the word and it says that he was the son of his old age. The difference between Joseph and his oldest brother Reuben was how many years? Tunajua esabu. Tunajua esabu. How many years was he? How many years was he? Do the math. You know before, now I see watoto wa miujisa. Wale miracle children wa papa. They took nine months. So between Reuben and Joseph, the maximum it can be is six years because there is nine months of incubation. So the difference between the firstborn and the eleventh 
It's just six years. So why does the Bible say that he was a son of his old age? The two words, if you do translation, because it's good to do, to read and you ask yourself, where does this? You go back to the Hebrew and you ask yourself, what word did they use in the Hebrew? It's two words that they used in the Hebrew. And I want to read you what it means. I want just to do a little bit. It says it's kerothneth. Eh? Sorry, not Kerothneth. Sorry for that. Let me go back um, to see the word that he used. That one is the next one. But the word that he used to describe him as being a son of old basically meant that he was, it was like a figure of speech. It was of a figure of speech. And this figure of speech basically meant that this son was wise for his years. He was wise for his, yes. And that is why as a son, Jacob knew that this son would be the one leading the others. That's why he was so responsible. He would go back to his father and give a report of what was happening in the field. That was the reason. Sio kwa sababu alikuwa na kamudomo. Unajua kuna watu wanasema Joseph ilikuwa alikuwa na nini? Alikuwa na kimbele mbele. Alikuwa anajipatia mambo. Oh, oh. If you notice he had been given responsibilities with his half brothers. Wale were the concubines. Dan, um, I believe it was Dan. Who was the other one? From the other brothers. Naphtali, Gad and Asher. He was the one going out to the field with them. So when he came back, he gave a report of what was happening. So what did he? So they did not like him because of him being loved by who? By also his father. And that word that they used by loved, meaning, was basically that he was favored by his dad. Because what did he do? He was wise and he did things right. And when we are talking about a generation of Joseph, one of the attributes that we need to have is what? Is wisdom. Yes, we need to walk in wisdom. And as we walk in wisdom, we do things what? Right. You cannot be given responsibilities and you're the one who is leading others astray. You cannot be the one being given responsibilities, but you're the one making the others fall. You cannot be the one who God has placed his anointing and you are leading your fellow people to take drugs and all of these other things. Is that possible? No. If we are to be called a generation of excellence, a generation that is called to the top, to lead nations and multitudes and peoples, then wisdom is important. Bwana asifiwe sana. Ambia your neighbor wisdom. Yes, we need to have wisdom of the old. Eh? Can you tell your neighbor that? Wisdom of the old. Wisdom of the old. Yes. That you have a small body like Joseph who was 17 years, but he would reason like an old person. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen. Na hiyo imaanishi unafaa kuwa umeboeka. Ati maisha yako ni yakubo. Unajua I know with young people wanaonanga. Nikianza kujiona kamuze. Sinitabo sana. Sinitakosa kuonekana. We will read some chapters below. And you will see that this guy had been well built. Wana asifiwe. Amen. So he had wisdom of the old. And as with that, then what happened? That his father felt that he needed to bless him. And what did he do? He blessed him with a coat. That's the next thing. He blessed him with a coat. He was a wise son. And then blessed with a coat. And this coat was important. Why? Because the leader of the home was normally given a coat. The one who was to lead them was given a coat. And this coat we call it what? The coat of what? And what do we call it? The coat of many? Yes, that's what we say. It's a coat of many colors. 
But in truth, it was not a coat of many colors. It was just also a figure of speech or a way it was translated wrongly. It specifically meant that it was a long-sleeved rope that started from up here going down to the ankles. And then at the collar and at the wrist, then they were hedged, um, they wedged in different colors. That's why they call it a coat of many colors. But it was white in nature. What was significance of this was because he had the opportunity to lead his brothers. That's why he was given this coat. But the brothers, by seeing this, eh, did what? Hated him the more. And as they hated him, eh, that's why we read down there that immediately after they had been sent out, and this is a story after which I had read, that he also was blessed and God gave him dreams. And you ask yourself, why did God give him dreams? Why could God just, you know, there was already hatred building up. Why did God give him dreams? And these dreams were specific. They talked about what? That as, they, as he dreamt, he saw them doing what? Turning, eh? bundling sheaves. And as they bundled the sheaves, what happened? All the other bundles, 11 bundles, bowed down to his. So the question I would ask you, because when this happened, he went and told his brothers, Akawambia, and what did he tell them? That my, eh, you guys were bowing down. So they were like, Sasa unataka kusema wewe utakuwa mfalme wetu. Wewe utakuwa mfalme wetu. And it made them even more mad. And then he even dreamed again. And after he dreamt again, now this one was even worse than the first one. If you would say that. There was the sun and the moon and the stars. And then there was his star. And then all of them did what? Bow down. So the question I would ask, if, you, if it were you, if it were you, and I want you to tell your neighbor, would you have told your brothers and even your fathers of such a dream? Ask them. I want you to ask them. Where will you get Mulisa? I hear some courageous people. The, because the question is this. If these dreams were not to be said, then why did the Lord give them? The Lord gave them because they needed to be said. Why? Because some years later, they will be fulfilled. Tell me if these dreams were not said and he kept it, he kept it in his heart. Where would the miracle be? Where would the miracle be? Where would the miracle be? Cindy? The miracle has to be seen because there was a proclamation at some point. One as if you were son. Because we serve a glorious God. A God who sees the end from the beginning. One as if you were. And the story continues. I just want to build some, some understanding on who Joseph was. So that as we conclude, we can really see. We can really see the traits of a Joseph generation. Which we have called to be. Buona sefiwe. Amen. Buona sefiwe. Amen. Amen. So, things became worse. Because even the, his father did what? Babaka alimuambia wacha hii maneno. Wacha hii maneno. Eh? How can you say this? Yani we were saying, even me. Unajua sasa mbeleni, if it was just the brothers. If it was the brothers, it is okay. But now, umeniongeza kwa hii kategori. Umeniongeza. Sasa unasema mimi na mama yako tutafanya na mna gani? Hey. Unasema, brother, you are very courageous. He says he scolded him. 
But something interesting is the verse thereafter. He says, but, he says, but his father kept this word. His father kept that in mind. One as if you. And so let's continue with the story. Let's just continue with the story because it's an interesting one. From there, the story goes that Joseph, after that, was done what? He was sent to look for his brothers. He was sent to look for his brothers who had gone to tender the sheep. And as he was taking care of all of these sheep, they saw him from afar. And as he came, what did they say? There comes the dreamer. There comes the one with a coat of many colors. He said, what shall we do to him? What shall we do to him? Let's kill this guy. Let's kill this guy. Let's kill this guy. Let's put out all of this thing. Why? Because they felt, man, this guy is just lifting himself above us. But if you notice that he used what God had given him. But the others were what? Were not content. Cindy. And that's why they felt bad and wanted to get against him. And he says that when they got him, before he got there, Reuben, let me tell you, Reuben, do you know why Reuben was alinyanganywa? The rightful to lead. And these are things that we do. Because Reuben was the firstborn. He was supposed to get the blessing and the birthright. He was the one supposed to lead. What happened to Reuben? If you go several chapters to chapter 50 down there, it says that he slept with his father's wife or his father's concubine. That is what happened. And the reason was because Rachel had died. Because Rachel had died, the concubine, Reuben thought, if now Rachel has died, and my mother is not well loved like Rachel, the concubine will be lifted up to become a wife. So he anticipated that and he slept with Bilha. That is what he did. And many of us do that, such things. That we are schemers in life. You scheme through things. You see that that thing should happen to that person, but because you don't like that person, what do you do? You scheme how that person will not get that thing. And that is how he lost his place as the leader of the house. Because his heart was filled with jealousy. His heart was filled with envy. But later we see now here, and you notice when he did that, he was only 23 years. It's at the same time. That's when he did. Because you remember, when Benjamin was born, who died? Rachel. So it was immediately after that. So that his father would not uplift her into a legal wife. That's when he slept with her. That's conniving. And so his father took away that birthright and gave it to who? And I'm telling you, the Lord has given us an opportunity and a platform for us to lead. And he has given us the place to be. You come here to read and to learn and to get knowledge. And we need to apply this knowledge in life. But some of you just get taken away by small things. To vitu to dogo. You start adding them in your heart. And you make sure and you start sinning. You start raving. You start using your advantage to destroy others. What happens? The Lord takes away what he planned for you. I don't know what you have seen. But I know you have seen something good. Ama ni kumuamusha mumuamushe? Aya muambia amoke. Usicheze na hizi vitu. You can't sleep. You can't sleep. Utamulikwa. 
unless you talk to the cameraman very nicely. What has he viewed? Amen. Mwambia ni amuke. Ah, very good. Hey. Let's kick on. Let's kick on. Now Reuben gets a plan. When he sees his brother, he says, no, no, no. We can't kill this guy. We can't kill him. Let's do this. He says, let's throw him into this empty cistern. This empty well. Let's throw him in that well. Let him die out of the elements so that his blood will not be in our hands. The guy in his mind was thinking of how to rescue Joseph. It happened that I believe his heart changed to some bit. And so they threw him when they caught him. They, eh, they threw him in the sister. And then they started cutting his what? His gown and they put blood on it and they ate that. And as they were waiting, then they saw some Ishmaelites coming through. And then Judah got a plan and said, ah, let's sell him as a slave. Let me tell you, brothers. Let me tell you, sisters, the Lord, let me, what he has planned for you, what he has put in you, because we read in Ecclesiastes, not in Ecclesiastes, in, in Ephesians, that he has given us all spiritual blessings, totally everything. As young as you are, he has given you all spiritual blessings. There is nothing you are lacking, totally nothing. He has given you everything. No plan of the evil one can shut it down. No plan of the evil one can shut it down. Let me tell you. No evil plan, however much they plan it. Things shift. Things shift. Things shift. Let me tell you. Because you see in this passage that as they did that, they were, what was God doing? God was preparing because he knew there was a famine coming. And he needed to save all of these guys. And he needed somebody with the right eh, equipment, with the right toolage, with the right mindset to go ahead and do what? And prepare. That was in God's mind. So even when they were conniving, thinking that they are destroying a future, that they are killing, they are sending somebody to become a slave, what was God doing? What was God doing? Orchestrating, putting things together, organizing, preparing a 17-year-old. Do we have 17-year-olds in the house? Do we have 17-year-olds in the house? The Lord was preparing a 17-year-old. For what? Rulership. Governorship. Kingdom business. Let me tell you. The Lord prepares. Now for my personal testimony. You see me limping here. Can you see me limping? Yeah, about 13 years ago. 14, 12, 12, 2010. When is 2010? 12 years ago. Yeah? I wasn't limping. I wasn't limping. Yeah? In fact, in high school, hey, let me tell you, high school, I, I, I played rugby. Man, I played rugby. Yeah? Oh, yes, I played rugby. <laughs> my teammates, <laughs> if, you are, if I tell you my teammates, you know the previous seventh coach that was called Ian Simeon or Innocent Simeon? If you Google him, that was my classmate. We played for four years when I was in high school. And I tell you, I loved sport. And I played sport. I played soccer in primary, rugby in secondary, in fact, even after. Man, I loved that. From there, I went to college. I did aeronautical engineering. After that, the Lord took me back home. Uh, because I felt after that there was something burning in me and I felt, you know what, even if I love making aircrafts, because I did, but it's hijafika, 
somewhere haijafika so the lord took, took me back home and i started doing ministry what you know high school ministry and all of these things and as i continued in 2008 because i finished school in oh, one college in 05 so i'm still young when i see you so you can notice i'm still young i'm still a spring chicken that's what the american says isn't you i'm still young and the Lord just placed in my heart, there are things that even if you do what, he, he will just pull you away from that. And he just placed me in my heart for me to minister and talk to young people. And I loved doing that. And in the process, I met Irene and we got married in 2008. 2008, January. This was post-election. When we got married in post-election, because I'm, I'm a cucumber, I'm a cucumber in Kikuyu. Eh? Have you ever heard that one? I'm a cucumber. Hey. My mother is. Eh? Eh? And so my relatives from Ukamban, in fact, they are from up here. They did not come for the wedding. Because it was January and things were hot. Eh? Post-election. So we only had people from one side. But hallelujah. Harusi lazima ifanyiki. Eh? Walisema harusi tunayo asuna. Oh yes. And it happened. Yes, it happened. And as I continued, you know, um, th there was a department that we used to work with uh, for drilling wells. We used to drill wells. And that, now that was a little bit of physics and I loved doing that. So I did what drilling wells in, in this ACMI. ACMI had a department that was drilling wells. So we did drill wells. We were drilling wells to give people water, which water, which is for life. Two years later, I started having pains in my back. And, uh, you know, we used to lift those heavy rods and place them on the rig. You know, we drill 200 meters, 300 meters and get water. We used to do that. And I used to be on the road, on the road, on the road. And as the pain started, I couldn't work. So I had to quit that and go back home and start to look for what. Now, what can I do that probably will reduce the pains that I have? And let me tell you, things became worse. Go to the doctor. The doctor says... You have TB. Started taking TB drugs. Took TB drugs for six months. Instead of pains going down, they were going up. Changed doctors. Did an MRI. Did all of those things. Man, it got to December. I called my dad and said, you know what? Now, this is 2010. I told him, if we don't do anything now, eh? Mambo ni memaliza. You know, when you, when you finish your things, unasema sasa, unaza andika will. I was my mambo in Yeah, I think I was about 27, 28 years. And we were blessed with a young boy called McHenry during that time. And I just told the Lord, you know, Lord, there are two things. You either remove the pain, because the pain was unbearable. The pain was, I would take all the painkillers that you know, and it would still come back again. It would come back again, come back again. So, in fact, it got to a place. Unajua, wanaume ulia? Wanaume ulia? Wanaume ulia? Wanaume ulia? Nili maliza machozi. Kama kuna kuanga na mfuko ya machozi, ilisha. Yes, you would cry, my friend. That pain would come and you would cry. Until you hide yourself because men are not supposed to be seen doing what? But let me tell you when it comes. Eh? Where's the feature? So I used to hide. But you can't live like that. So I told God two things. You heal me or you take me. Mambo ni mbangapi? Yes, I just told God that. You, you sought this thing. It was December. And yes, we went for another MRI and some other doctors. And one, in fact, one of the days we we're going to see the doctor, I walked to the car, got into the car, we drove to see the doctor. We got there. I couldn't get out of the car. Couldn't walk. In fact, I noticed I couldn't feel my legs. So I was put on a wheelchair. And then I was taken to see the doctor. The doctor had a line like about 30 people. We waited until about 8 o'clock in the evening. Doctor, 
got the report. He said, man, you have a tumor. And this tumor has done this to you. You need to get surgery. Mbio Mbio got into hospital. And they did surgery the next day. After a week, results come back. And that whole week, you're in hospital. You can't walk. You can't do everything you used to do. Except talking. I shut down from here. From here. Yan, when you do this, you can't feel anything. You can't feel anything. You can't do anything. That was me. Question. You ask yourself then, what should I do? Should I cry for pity? Eh? What can I do? Results came back. They say that I have cancer. Wow. In fact, it is hard. You are not told by your people. They look for a counselor. The counselor comes to tell you. And I know they can tell you their story because they were told before I was told. When they came to me, they, you know they come smiling. You know people come smiling. Because they register in their head that when you have cancer, what does it mean? What does that mean? Yes, means death. But now even I can't walk. Now what can you do to this guy? 28 year old. 27 year old. Just starting life. When things are just looking like how? Then everything shuts down. What do you do? Tell me what do you do? It's the same thing with Joseph. 17 years. And the Lord, the Lord just allowed, he was sold into Egypt. Sold into Egypt. Same thing. And these things are happening. Not just me, many others. Cindy, yes. So what do you do, my brother? You don't whine. You say, now, things have happened. Now what do I, should I do? I pick up myself and see, now what? The next thing, I, I can do some things. I'm paralyzed. I'm on a wheelchair. I can't provide for the family. Now I'm bedrest. They used to leave me. If you, if you leave me somewhere, I used to be put on a mattress. If you leave me there, you will find me there. Even if it's two, three, four, five days. I am right there. You need food, they have to bring you food. You need to go to the bathroom, which is use the toilet. Man, that was something. So what do you do? The mind. The mind. Cindy, let's read what Joseph did and then start interpreting. Let's jump to Genesis 39. This is Joseph. It says this, that when Joseph was taken to Egypt by the Ishmaelite traders, he was purchased by Potiphar, an Egyptian officer, Potiphar was the captain of the guard for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The Lord was with, I want you to underline if you have a Bible, underline that. It says even in the thick of things. It says that the Lord was with who? The Lord was with who? Yes. However tough it may be. However misunderstood you are. However, in a hole you may be placed, the Lord was with who? And it continues because it's a wonderful scripture. I've just lost it here, 39.1. It says that the Lord was with Joseph. So he succeeded. Eh? Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> He's in Egypt. He's in a foreign land. He has no brothers. He has no father. But what is he doing? He is succeeding. No matter what the devil throws you away, if you are in the generation of Joseph, wow, what happens? You succeed. Yes, you get sick and you're not able to do your mocks. Second time, umeshinda hospital. Ama umefukuzwa kwa sababu ya school fees. 
should that bring you down? Oh, now I'm be on a goja exam. I'm just waiting for the exam. Because, because I'm, a, I'm a son, I am born of the loins of the Lord. I cannot fail. Can we say that? That I cannot? I. Now, now I see what Joseph. I cannot. Yeah. I want to hear you say, I cannot fail. I cannot fail. Yes. Because we are born to succeed. People of the kingdom are called to succeed. We are called to succeed whatever the devil throws at us. Be it sickness, be it what? Yes, pengine kwenyu, everybody was cast. Does it matter? No. Because I am born in him. I am alive in him. I cannot. I want to hear a 10 over 10. Watch hile a Friday a citizen. I want a 10 over 10. Hile rector selenagonga. Sema, I cannot. I tell you, I cannot fail. I cannot fail. Let me tell you what happens. And you know the story. It says, and because you cannot fail, you have to be noticed. You have to be noticed. Man, I can't fail. Eh? Geography. Munasomanga geography. Oh. Home science. <laughs> Social studies, eh? Eh? Biology. Eh? Biology. I tell you, chemistry. Mumeonesho mutu mungine. Hey! Let me tell you. It says that we cannot. Yes, we cannot fail. We cannot fail. Ata huyu ambaya na pato na kausingisi. Awezi shindwa. Eh? Alikuwa anatuotea. Alikuwa anatuotea vile mambo ilikuwa inaendelea Egypt. Ama na mnagani. Alikuwa anataka kuona clearly mambo ilikuwa inaendelea na mnagani. Eh, ama alit, ako kama Joseph alikuwa na ndoto. Na atatupatia tukimaliza, sindio? Bwana asifiwe sana. So he continues and says, Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with who? Let me tell you something. When the Lord is with you, man number one, you cannot fail. Number two, People have to notice. Bwana asifiwe sana. Na sio wata notice kwa sababu ya tu urembo. Ah, kuna vitu zinaenda mbele ya urembo. Ama na mna gani warembo? Oh yeah. Hauta nipenda tu kwa sababu ya nini? Ya hii. Eh? Wanaitanga rangi ya nini? Lazima utainua. Ama wanaume? Eh? You will not just be noticed by your what? Eh, ni tu sideburn. Na tu nini? Na kifua. Iko hapo? Hey. Let's see elevation. Let's see elevation. Eh? So the Lord lifts you. You have to be noticed. You have to be noticed. And so he lifts you up to a position of honor. He continues and says what? That Joseph, hey, this is Joseph, an amazing man. Eh? As soon as, because he even has to notice that the Lord is with this guy. Because everything he does, does what? Prospers. Eh? Psalms chapter 1. That everything he does does what? I want you to say it louder. Everything he does does what? Prospers. And that is what happened. So he says soon 
he soon made Joseph his personal attendant. He put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. For the, for the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property. Then what happened? He says that the Lord began to bless Potiphar. Let me tell you. Hey, hey, hey. If you understand who you are, let me tell you who prospers. Your parents have to prosper. Your parents, where you are under, because you understand the kingdom, they have to prosper. Number one, you can't fail. You can't fail. You prosper. Sindio, everybody around you prospers. Yeah? Even where you have been placed, where you work, has to prosper. You go to a school, it starts prospering. Ama namna gani? Nani wanataa kuwa number one? In makueni machakos in the whole country. None. 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 I want you to see this. Whoa, what? Where, where? If we are number one, who is number two? We are all number ones. So can we say we are all number ones? Yes. Until the education office has to send an inquiry. They send an inquiry. We want to know what is happening in Kibwezi and Makindu. Tunataka kujua ni nini wanakula, ni nini wanafanya. Kwa sababu hawa watoto wanapita mitiani yote. Mpaka mnapewa pepa ya pili kuconfirm kama ni nyinyi. Si ndio? Na mnaandika jina tena. Na unasema unataka tufanyie mtihani wapi? Bwana Magoa unataka tufanyie wapi? Tutafanya tena. Kwa sababu we cannot. Yes. Sons of Joseph. We cannot fail. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen. And I can tell you Potiphar was happy. Because everything he did did what? Now, 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 let's get to that place that you like. It continues and says this. Yeah, you love this place. Ah, you love this one. Chapter, verse 6, it says, So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibilities over everything he owned. With Joseph there, he didn't worry about a thing except what kind of food he ate. My goodness. Eh? He was that good. And so after this, then what happened? Joseph was a very handsome and well built. Eh? Jeshi Labuana. Eh? Jeshi Labuana. Eh? He was what? Handsome and well. <laughs> All those who are handsome and well-built men say, Hoye. Hoye. All those handsome and young men built, well-built say, Hoye. Hoye. Oh, yes. Hoye. Oh, we have a shout. We have a chant here. Hey. But as if you were. Woo. The young man. Eh? Yeah? Can, can you, can I hear a, a, a whoo? Wako na kasaprano bia. Wako sao. And because the guy was handsome and well built, Potiphar's wife soon began, looked at him lustfully and, be, <laughs> and he said, come and sleep with me. Hey. Hey. 
Amen ya kwanza. Mumesikia amen ya kwanza? Amen ya kwanza. Tutaifikia. Come and sleep and she did what? She demanded. But let us see what real men do. Let's see what real men do. Hey, I want to see what real men do. Ah. Hallelujah. Real men. Woo. Let us see. Are you ready? Let's go to verse 8. Verse 8 says this. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Let's see what real men do. Eh? Real men, they refuse. <laughs> ha ha! Ha! Wait, 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 wait! Yay! Hey! What do real men do? They refuse. Wanamwambia niko sawa. Lakini sio wewe. Sio wewe. Real men. I tell you. Do we have real men in the house? Let's let's see the reasons. He has like two three reasons. Two three reasons why real men refuse. Eh? to have sex with people who are not their wives. Let's look at three or two reasons why they refuse. Says one, number one, because my master trusts me. Hey! I have been given all of these things, but my master trusts me. Man, I can't touch you. Because my master trusts me with you. And I can't touch you. Buenas if you are son. So real men. Take responsibilities. Seriously. Buenas if you are son. Real men. Take responsibilities. Seriously. For you young lady. If you want a responsible young man. Eh? Go for the one who refuses. Who will tell you no? Who will tell you no? I will not even hug you. I am saying hallelujah. Ninajua kile kiko hapa mbele diyo kwa sababu unataka hang. Sindio. Lakini unamuambia siyo sai. Siyo sai. At the right. Woo! So real men. Woo! Real men. They say, my master trusts me with everything in the entire household. No one here has more authority than I do. He has held back nothing from me. Except who? You. Because you are his? Because you are his wife. How can I do such a wicked thing? So when you look at it, it says that the master trusts me and I cannot break that trust. I must walk pure until that day that I will walk down the aisle. Man, ladies, that I will walk down the aisle and the pastor will stand there and say, you have walked well. Buon as if you were. And that's in the future. We are just prophesying to each and every one of you. That each and every one of you right now will walk down the aisle and say, I have won. I have fought and I have won. Buon as if you were, son. Are we promising to walk in purity? In mind, in integrity, in the spirit. Wanaume hoe? Tuko pamoja. 
verse 10, it says this. Because I can tell you these things. So we have said number one is because he trusted. Potiphar trusted Joseph. The second one is because is in verse 9. Let's go to verse 9. Verse 9 says this. How can I do this wicked thing? He says because he has held back, which means that he had done good to Joseph. So the first one we have said is what? Because he trusted. Potiphar trusted. The second one is because Potiphar was good to Joseph. That's why he could not break that. And the third one, quickly, because I know we have to conclude, is in verse, after verse 9. Verse 9, it says that how can I do such a wicked thing? I wouldn't be a, it would be a great sin against God. So three things. Number one, because Potiphar trusted him. Number two, because Potiphar was good to him. And number three, because it was a sin against God. Bonas few sum. These three things, I can tell you, are attributes of a son who is born out of the loins of Joseph. A son who understands kingship and authority. A son or a child who knows authority. Who knows who has been called and where he is going. Because if you are called to kingship, if you are called to be that great man, you have to walk, you have to make God, because God has trusted you with what you have. God has been good to you despite of where you are. And then you, God has enabled you. And so it is a sin against him. So you fear him. Buenas fewer son. So those are three things. That a man. What did we say? A man of what? Eh? Man who's responsible. A young man that we look up to. Has to have. Buenas fewer son. So to conclude. Just wanted to conclude with this. As we round down. That even after this lady. Because in verse. I believe it's in verse. Yes verse 13. 12, 13. It says that this lady insisted on sleeping with who? With Joseph. So what did Joseph do? Let me tell you. With sexual sin. One way of dealing with sexual sin is doing what? Is running. Young men, we have to teach ourselves how to run. We have to teach ourselves how to run. Yes, I tell you, if you want to know it was difficult, ask Samson. Eh? Macho man. The man who was I tell you, this guy was unbelievable in strength. Jama alingua git. Git. Na unajua git za siku hizo siyo kama hizi. Alingua git akayeklea kwa shoulders. And he went 30 kilometers. Na akaywacha uko. Yani ye ni kaa trela. Hey, this guy was strong. But let me tell you, sexual sin. Sexual sin. Read the book of Proverbs. It says, run. Do not be found in the way of the wayward woman. And it's not necessarily, even for ladies, run away. And when there is no blood to think, what happens? It goes down. And people don't reason. 
Let me tell you, you ran. That is what Joseph did. He ran. And as he ran, the wife was left with a what? I want, I want just to finish with this because this was, it's just profound. Because the story goes and it says that after she was left with that cloak, this is what happened, verse 19. Because she screamed and everybody came and thought, yes, Joseph had done this. Verse 19 says, Potiphar, because when she came, she explained to Potiphar what has, had done. Verse 16, she kept the flock until her husband came home. Then she told her husband the story. That the Hebrew servant you brought into our house tried to come in and fool around with me. She said, but when I screamed, he ran away and I was left with his cloak with me. Verse 19, it says this, that Potiphar was furious. When he heard his wife's story about how Joseph had treated her. So he took Joseph and threw him into the prison where the king's prisoners were held. And there he remained. Let me tell you this. One of the things that you should know when you read this story is this. These are truth. There is no way a slave can want to rape a woman who is free. And the penalty is to be taken to prison. There was no way. There was no way. Let me tell you. The punishment for somebody who was raping a free woman during these days was was what? Yes. Eh? Na siya ya kuitana. Siya ya kuitana. That was the reason. So what happened? Think about this. Pharaoh was the king's guard. He was the leader of the king's guard, uh, Potiphar. He puts him where the prisoners of the king were put. He was supposed to be put, if you think about it, where the slave's prison was. But he's not taken to the slave's prison. No, he's taken to the king's prison. Why? Let me tell you. Potiphar was furious. But not because of the raping incident. He was furious because he lost a good worker. When you do the worst sin, where should you be put? In the worst prison. Kwanini upelekwe prison ili iko kando na state house. If you go to chapter 40 and you read there, ndiyo wakikishe, the, the one, the chief bread maker, sindio? And the wine, the one who did the wine, when they made the king angry, which prison were they taken? To the one Joseph was. Read the Bible. You will see that Potiphar was mad. But I think mostly because he lost a good work. Because he trusted Joseph and he knew this guy can't do this. But because everybody, there is no evidence to support this one guy. What can I do? He put him in the prison. Guess where the prison was? It was attached to his house. You can read the Bible, you'll find that. The prison was attached to Potiphar's house. So what was happening? Even when the devil is coming to plan and do and the things that are going to happen, what happens? He says that the Lord was with him. And you know the story, it says that even in prison, he was put in charge of the what? In fact, when these guys sinned and they were to be taken to prison, they were put under him so that he takes care of him. One as if you were son. Basically, it says this. Even when you're doing right, wrong things can happen. Even when you're saying the right thing, things, wrong things can happen. But they are all in the plan of God to prepare you for a level where, let me tell you, all of this, it happened in a period of 13 years. 
before he became the governor. 13 years. Either in Potiphar's house or in prison. Bwana asifiwe. 13 years. Let me tell you. You have many years coming. Many years in front of you. We have many years that the Lord is preparing you. And because we have understood that we cannot, we cannot fail. The Lord is preparing us for good things. The Lord is preparing us for righteousness. The Lord is preparing us for high places. The Lord is preparing us, and not just in Kenya. Let me tell you, you can prosper even in Rwanda. You can prosper, oh, I can tell you, in Egypt. You can prosper in South Africa. You can prosper in Sri Lanka, even if there are bad things happening. Hey! Wherever the Lord has sent you, you will do what? And let me tell you, people will come to look for you. People will come to look for you. Because let me tell you where there is integrity and where you love the Lord and you succeed, people are attracted to it. Yes, you can't keep a good man down. Amen. So what are we saying? Can we make some choices today? Can we decide? Can we make a turnaround? You're a young man, you're a young lady, and you're there, you're saying, man, life is unfair. Eh? I want, you know, nataka kujinyonga, things are thick, bad. Where I come from, they, nobody likes me. Nobody like J Joseph. Nobody like Joseph. But let me tell you, nobody could keep him down. Nobody could keep him down. The Lord just elevated him. When I if you, I want us to conclude and I want us to stand. Can we all stand? Can we all stand? Can we all stand? Yes, worship team, you can come. You can come. Yes, you can come. There is a song. There's a song we we're just listening to yesterday, and I know probably you may know it. Is is a the she repeats this verse that says, Pierce through me, cut through me, open me up. Yeah. Eh? Do your surgical work in me. Hmm? Till I can see like you. You know that song? Yeah. Yeah, Victoria Renzi. Eh? She sings and says, Pierce through me. Pierce. Pierce. Do you know it? Oh my. If we don't know, we can sing whichever other song. But I just want the Lord to just pierce through us. To cut through us. These things and enmity that we may have. This thirst for drugs and alcohol and things that are not right. Appetites. Sexual appetites that we have. We know he should cut through. He should remove that which is not right. Are you ready for him to cut through? Are you ready? Would you raise your hands to the Lord? Just raise your hands to the Lord. Raise your hands to the Lord. Oh, King of glory. Oh, yes, God. You have... Just sing any song if... Even if it's not that one, you can sing whatever other song. Just, just raise your hands to the Lord. Just say, Lord, Lord, there are things that are troubling me and I can't stay with them. There are things that are making me, you know, not to reach that goal. I'm, a, I'm, I'm born of this tribe. I'm born of this tribe. Lord, you are my God. And there is none other. I can't ashamed you. I can't ashamed you. Yes, a young man bought with a price. Oh, we bless you.
withholding nothing withholding nothing withholding nothing and she cut opportunities for you. We have had this and you're saying, Lord, there's no way I can stay in this rot, in this hole. There's no way I will beat myself. No way. I'm going through troubles and afflictions. And you're saying, I want to turn around. 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 Yes, I want to turn around. Things have not been working and I want to turn around. I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to stand before that judgment seat of Christ. Knowing that yes, yes, I did agree to you, Lord. Are you there and you want Jesus? You want Jesus? It's a solemn moment. Just lay the let, bow your heads. Just bow your heads. It's a, it's a solemn moment. You're there and you're saying, no, I can't live like this. I want Lord. I want you to accept me. Why? Because I've grown in bitterness and shame. In bitterness and shame, people have rejected me. In my home, I'm the least. And they talk bad against me. Are you there and you want that prayer? I want you to run in front. I want you to run in front. Yes, don't look at your neighbor. Don't think about them. You just come because let me tell you, it's between you and your maker. It's between you and your maker. It's between you and your maker. Because you're the one who stand before that throne room of God. That, and he's there saying, yes. I want to call you. I'm calling you. And I'm calling you. Are you there and you do not know Christ? I don't want you to live that way. I don't want you to live in that way. Are you there? Just come. Just come. Come in front. I see a hand back there. I see a hand back there. Can you lead them in front? Can you lead them in front? Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Please come. Please come. Don't be afraid. Don't look at your neighbor. Just come. Come and receive Christ. This Christ who takes away, who, who doesn't look at what has happened in your past. But he wants you as you are. He wants you as you are. Are you there? Just come. Just come. Just come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you there? Thank you, my brother. Are you there? You want to come? Just right. Right here. Right here. Just here. Just here. Just see. Just see. Are you there? Somebody else. Just come. Just come. Just come. It's a solemn time. Just come. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is calling you. It's calling you. It's calling you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just come. Just come. Just come. Yes. I can't fail. I can't Jesus. fail. I can't fail. I can't fail. No more. Please come. Please come. Oh, yes. To follow Jesus. Come on. I have decided. Hey, the Katatala Patu. Yes. Please come. Please come. It's an invitation. It's an invitation. Just come. Yes. You, you can be on your knees. Be on your knees. Just be on your knees. Oh, yes. Just come. Just come. I I call you, come, come, oh yes, come, 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 come. I can't stay the way I am, I can't be beaten and deflated, come, come, come,
to follow Jesus. Yes, please come. Please come. Please come. Please come. Please come. Please come. Oh, To follow Jesus. I'm waiting for you. He's calling you. Oh, yes. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. Please, please come. Let's come. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross. Can all of you who are in front just raise your hands? Just raise your hands. I want you to repeat, to repeat this, this prayer. This prayer after me. Can you say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins. I want to change my life from what it was before to be a new creature whose mind is renewed to walk a new way from now henceforth. Issues of the devil and sin, I refuse them. I'm not going back there. I'm a son of the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we clap for them? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, I, I want us to shout to the Lord. 
as I give away the mic, I want us to shout to the Lord because this is a great harvest. And let me tell you, there is nothing that makes heaven jump. <laughs> nothing, not money, not buildings, oh, not positions. Only when souls come back to their father. And these young ones have come back to the father. Man, we have run out of time. We have run out of time. I wanted us to pray to break some things, but I know we'll do that in the next session. Because I can tell you this. Let me just tell you this. This, this I got in the morning. Just to conclude, this I got in the morning. I was just reading in the book. Just keep on standing. This just for some two minutes. That King Hezekiah in 2 Kings chapter 19, 18, 19. The king is called, I, be, I believe, Sennacherib, had sent his servant to come and tell uh, Hezekiah, uh, what, what do you trust? Uh, why do you put your trust in your God? And yet he has already been ashamed. Why put your trust and we have numbers? Uh, and I know that is what the devil did when this issue of the pandemic came and wanted to stop this. He wanted to stop this. So that, he came and he told the, uh, the scribe, the guys who had come to represent Hezekiah, that please, eh, tell this, do not, you know, musijidanganye. That's what he was saying. Musijidanganye mutamalizwa. Eh? We have the numbers, we have the chariots, we have what, we have everything. We will defeat you. And all of those things were written. And Ezekiah took them and went into the house of the Lord. And he laid them down. And he cried to the Lord. And I want us to cry because we, this is the first one. The first of all mammoths. I don't think there has been another mammoth in Kenya. I think this is the first one. I want us to declare and open them up. And we are going to lay what we want to the Lord. And I know the message will come from Isaiah. And Isaiah came and told Hezekiah, let me tell you, tonight, you know, what will happen has not happened before. Because I will send my angel. And the angel came and destroyed 185,000 soldiers. Let me tell you, we are in that race. And right now I'm telling you, as we make a shout, as we chant, as we declare, by five o'clock, we will open up all the mammoths that need to happen in this country. They will happen in the name of Jesus. Oh yes! Buenas if you will. And let me tell you, the monies that we need for the mammoths, the problem will be where should we keep them? Because the monies will be so much overwhelming. We will need <laughs> we will be doing five to ten mammoths on the same day. On the same day. So we need ten, fifty of these tents to be going around the country bringing such souls to the kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. Buenas if you son. Amen. Because God has called us to a time like this. Buenas if you So I know these guys will be taken care of, I think, by the, by the patrons. I don't know if they will leave from this side. I think you can leave from this side. And allow Paul to come and conclude this session. Buenas if you Can we give the Lord a hand clap as these guys leave? Just leave through there. Just leave through there. So that we can get their names. Just live through, yes, out, out through that opening, out through that opening. And thank you, thank you, thank you. I didn't finish my story. I'll come and finish the next time. Buenas if you. Amen. But I'm standing, I'm walking. Praise the Lord. Buenas if you, son.
Amen and amen. The Lord is good. Bwana sifiwe. Shangilia ambe tena ambe ma Yesu bwana fame wa ajabu ambe shinda kivona mauti atawale milele amina Can I hear shout when I begin to get it when Shangilia Again, amen, amen, amen. So we celebrate what the Lord has done. And I want to request us just briefly, let's take our seats. I want to bring a couple of announcements. Yes, we have come to another point where we still want to continue with the worship. And we want to worship the Lord with our substance, our offering. So please get into that pocket of yours and get out an offering. We want, we are praying for the presence of the Lord to walk together with us. Moses was told, if I'm to go with you, uh, nobody should appear before my presence empty-handed. So please take out that offering. And we have our teachers, the patrons, uh, the Christian teachers with the baskets, please uh, step forward. Uh, we have the teachers who are supposed to be taking that offering. Uh, we kindly request you to make your way uh, to the front. We want to see, okay, I can see they are standing. Uh, they have stood in uh, some areas. So please get that offering and uh, speak to it in such a big auditorium in this mammoth rally. Uh, speak to that offering as you give winene, what you want the Lord to do in your life. Our teachers, please, I want to parade you here and then you're going to go around. And as we do that, I want to request we have still our leaders here. We have our deputy, a principal from uh, Kasue Girls uh, to pray for the offering. Uh, Madam Zipora, uh, she was my menda in Makindu Boys. She was in charge of the CU in Makindu Boys. Let's give her a appreciate her Zipora. Amen. Bwana Sifiwe. Nataka tuombe. Baba katika jina la Yesu, tukombele zako. Tunasema ni asante kwa sababu ya nema yako, ambayo umetenda, maali hapa. Pokea siva zote na utukufu wote, ni kwa sababu ni wako. Mikononi mwetu, tumeshika sandaka, jiova, za kukubariki kwa sababu ya wema wako, na kwa sababu wewe ni mkuu. Jewa mungu ishe melele, ukapokea sandaka zetu, sikawe suitu aroma mbele zako katika jina la Yesu. Bariki yote alie na sandaka, na wale ya wana, jiova, Pia ukawabariki katika jina la Yesu. Tubariki katika vipindi ambavyo vimesalia katika jina la Yesu. Na ni katika jina la Yesu, tumeomba na kuamini. Okay, thank you. For the purpose of order, we want to give while seated, but we invite the praise. Yeah, we want to invite the praise and worship to continue as we offer while seated. And uh, once our teachers, you are done, you bring it to at the a podium, we pray for it. So, Two. 
Nijapopita kwenye bonde la mauti Sitaogopa kwani wewe uko na mi gongo lako na fimbo yako e bwana zanifariji kanifanyia amani Nijapopita kwenye bonde la mauti Sitaogopa kwani wewe uko na mi Gongo la kona fimbo yako e bwana zanifariji kanifanyia Uli sema ya kwamba wewe utaniacha Kwani mimi ni monela jicho lako e bwana wanitazama Asubuhi mchana jioni kanifanyia amani huyu Yesu we Ambe nifanyia amani Ambe nifanyia amani Ambe nifanyia amani kaondoa kaondoa huzuni yangu huzuni yangu kanifanyia oh ambe nifanyia ambe nifanyia amani huyu Yesu we ambe nifanyia Kanifanyia amani We say Nijapopita Kwenye bonde la mauti Hey Zitaogopa Kwani wewe ukona mi Gongo lako na fimbo yako E buwana zanifariji Kanifanyia amani Umesema ya kwamba Wewe utaniacha Kwani mimi Nimoni la jicho ya ka E mwana wani saidia Asubu imchana jioni Kanifanyia amani Huyu ya suwe Ame nifanyia amani Huyu ya suwe Ame nifanyia amani Kaondoa Huzuni yangu Huzuni yangu Kanifanyia amani Nifanyia amani Kaondoa Kusuni yangu Haibo away we are going to release you officially so let's remain seated so young men young girls we remain seated we'll release you officially please don't go so let's be seated will release us officially don't go anywhere So come back, come back, those who are going. I'm seeing you are coming back. We appreciate you. Let's settle, let's settle uh, very fast. And uh, we appreciate your quick response. May the Lord bless you. Surely the Lord bless you, young men and girls.
So let's settle down. We appreciate you, young uh, men and women, for that quick response. And may the Lord uh, bless you. So I believe we have all the baskets here. Okay, we are still waiting for those baskets. We want to pray for the offering. All of us seated. Young men walk a bit faster. And the Bible says that the young are strong. And you can walk faster than that young men. And those who are coming to at the tent, please walk are faster than that. And we want to be blessed together. 